Hey guys, this is Matt Bell with another Improv for Violinist lesson. Yes, I know I missed another week. Um, I can't use the hurricane as an excuse this time. Uh, I was actually sick. And uh, yeah, you didn't want to hear me coughing and sniffing and hacking. And uh, besides, I was having a bad hair day. And uh, I don't know, I'm just a lot of excuses. Anyway, um, so the last video, we talked about sort of the four elements that I see in a solo, the four sort of sections, an intro, a build, a payoff, and an outro. Um, we talked about several strategies for getting into a solo. So obviously this week we're going to talk about the build. Now, let me preface this by saying that if you've successfully entered your solo and the ideas are flowing, don't fight that. Um, when you ask the great songwriters how they write their best songs, they will almost invariably tell you, I started the song and then it sort of wrote itself. You just sit down and start. And if the song starts pouring out of you, you just go with it. It's real. It's magical. It's honest. If you listen back, you'll wonder how you did it. Well, solos can be like that. And you'll know the moment you start it. Man, if it feels like something real is just pouring out of you, forget all the rules and just let that solo play itself, okay? These structures we're talking about are for the other 90% of the time or more uh, when the solo is not writing itself and you feel like you gotta work a little bit harder, okay? The first thing to think about is how long is your solo gonna be? You know the structure of the song. How long is your solo? Is it four bars, eight bars, 12 bars, or is it just long, okay? It's not unheard of to have a solo of indeterminate length. You'll just start and it's like, you know, we've either got an exit lick or there's, you know, some eye contact we're going to make that's going to let us get out of the solo. Sometimes that's, and that's true, a solo is just, you know, I don't know, we're going to solo for a while. Um, the reason it's important to know how long the solo is going to be as you're getting into it is because that tells you how patient you need to be for the build. A good solo has direction. It's not just aimless wandering around chord progressions. It should feel like it's headed somewhere. If you don't know exactly how much time you have, it's a little hard to sort of gauge where the solo needs to go, okay? You don't need to know exactly where you're headed for the build, um, but you should, rough, you should know roughly how much time you have, okay? It's a, if it's a four or an eight bar solo, which is really common in my gig, you have time for like one idea, okay? The build's gonna need to be pretty deliberate and use one or two elements at the most, okay? You can't cram every idea you have into a couple bars. It's just not digestible. Um, so a longer solo gives you time to do some exploring. Remember as a kid, you draw a mountain and it was just, it looked like this, right? It's just a little simple triangle. If you've ever been to the mountains, you know, that's not what mountains look like. There, there's a lot of ups and downs, and, and, you know, we're sort of eventually working our way up to the peak, but it could be four steps up, three steps down, ten steps up, six steps down. A long build can be like that, right? You have time to be patient, to breathe. In fact, if you don't, your audience won't be anticipating the climax because they're excited. They're going to be demanding it because they're tired of you just exhausting them, okay? Okay. So what are some practical things we can do to build? Let's assume that we've got you know, enough time to do sort of an orderly build, um, but we don't have all day, all right? We can increase complexity, either harmonically or rhythmically. Maybe we start out with some basic pentatonic stuff, sort of set the table, and then progress towards some more out choices. Uh, maybe we start with some basic swung eighth notes, do da do da do, and then start working toward more unpredictable and complex rhythms, right? So do da do da do, ba da da boop ba boom, ba da do da da boop ba. Right? We can increase intensity. Maybe we start quiet and gradually get louder. Yes, you really can use dynamics in a solo. Um, weird, I know, right? Um, maybe we start with our bow closer to the fingerboard and start working closer to the bridge. It's gonna give us a little more uh, complexity. It doesn't just increase volume, but it gives us more complex timbres, okay? We can climb the sonic ladder. Maybe our solo starts on the lower strings and it starts working towards higher strings or higher positions. That's actually a really good way to discipline yourself if you sort of know, hey, I've got a while to go in this solo. Maybe I'm gonna discipline my start just myself. I'm a five or six string guy, so maybe I'm gonna start sort of my C and G strings. 
and I'm going to force myself to wait a while before I play anything on a D string. And then, you know, I sort of work up. Maybe I'm going to let myself have a couple notes on an A string. And then I'm going to let myself work on the E string. So that's a way to help myself build this solo by walking up that sonic ladder. Okay? Maybe our intervals get bigger. We start with some single notes and we work toward more double and triple stops. Maybe we're getting more and more chromatic as we go. That's creating more tension. Hopefully all these ideas are starting to come to you and you know, I don't want to use all these elements in any given solo, but some of these ideas are saying, oh yeah, I can, I can use that to create some build, some tension, some anticipation, some direction in where my solo is going, okay? The entire idea is to give the audience that we are progressing somehow, that we have a destination, that you have a plan, and that we're not just desperately trying not to miss a chord change, okay? Again, do we have to have any idea of where we're headed? No, at least not at first. In fact, it's probably best to not know. There's a big difference between an outline and a script, okay? An outline gives you the freedom to react to things that are happening around you, which means you're listening to your band and letting them influence you. Of course, it's your solo. The hope is that the band is listening to you and letting you influence them, but then this becomes like a feedback process, right? And so we'll talk next week about exactly where we're building to. Um, but yeah, the, the solo should have some direction. And, and don't, like I said, you don't necessarily want to know exactly where you're headed when you start. But as you start building and these say, you're just sort of going, I'm, okay, I'm going to get a little more and more chromatic. The destination is going to start to reveal itself. Okay. Or an ideal destination is going to start to reveal itself. Um, Let's use a football analogy. I like football. It's, it's fall. Okay? So imagine you're the quarterback, and your coach has told you all week, we got to run the ball to win this game. But on the first play of the game, the defense lines up right on top of the ball and leaves your star receiver wide open. What do you do? You throw him the ball. You take what you're given, okay? So that's what I mean that you don't necessarily want to have your, your final destination worked out ahead of time because what the band is giving you, like in my example, what the defense is giving you, may be a little different. So if, if the guys in your band are starting to become, maybe your bass player is starting to walk down, he was starting up a high on his neck during your solo and he starts walking down and it starts getting chunkier and chunkier and heavier, maybe you want to react to that. Maybe you're going to go up and create a contrary motion thing in the solo. Maybe you're going to stay still sonically. I'm going to stay right in a very small range but as he's walking down, I may start playing faster and faster notes. So I'm going to create a little tension as he's walking away from me. But instead, you know, start with whole notes and start going faster and faster, ending with a lot of sixteenths. So it's a reaction to what your bass player is doing. If you, in your mind, thought, okay, well, I'm going to be headed toward this thing, before the solo even starts, it doesn't give you a chance to listen, read, and react. Okay? If you're in the middle of a build and the bottom drops out, it's cool. Go with it. It's okay. You can always build again, especially if it's a longer solo. And that will actually happen a lot of solos. The band will be jamming in your solo, and you hear them, right? They're just going to sort of break it down. Sometimes a bass player and a drummer will sort of give each other this little look and this smirk. Boom! The whole bottom falls out, and they do this little breakdown thing. Go with it right? That's the musical thing to do. So if you're too committed to your original plan, you could miss out on some real magic. But if you don't have a plan at all, you're almost guaranteed to never get out of the gate. So, so does this make sense? You want to have a little bit of a plan, but don't sell your soul to keep that plan, okay? So your homework this week is to pull up some more backing tracks, get into a solo just like you did last week. But this time, keep going. Decide before you start how much time you're going to give yourself. Vary that amount of time so you learn how to do quick builds, slow builds. You're also going to learn how to be patient, maybe even building multiple times. Obviously, you can't, your track, you're not, it's not an interactive thing. You're not reading or reacting with that track. Okay, but it makes it a little simpler. If you get some practice building in different ways, then you can be a little more relaxed during a real solo and you can be more free to react to your bandmates, okay? It's really exciting when you start to feel like you've got some command over the direction of a solo. Quarterbacking the game 
not just the player of the series, and your solos are going to get better really fast. Okay? I'll see you next week.